Hey, what's up guys? John here. Mark my words about what's going to happen in Florida over the next 24 to 36 hours. Florida is preparing its largest evacuation in seven years. A life-threatening hurricane set to take a direct hit at Florida this week. We are walking into an absolute disaster with insurance coming, not just here in Florida. There's going to be something that's going to be spread all throughout America. When you get Hurricane Elaine, cause $100 billion, according to our government, the USDA.gov reports on this number, $100 billion. Now they now just upgraded Milton to a category five. What I believe is going to happen is I believe we're gonna see costs rise dramatically all throughout America. And with this cost, we're gonna see a lot of homeowners walking away from their properties, a lot of investors stepping forward, buying deals in prime locations where insurance is just way too expensive for pennies on the dollar, buying them all cash. Everything about our real estate market, everything about our economy, everything about our world is gonna be soon changing. Glenn Kelman, the CEO of Redfin, came out in 2021 saying the only people taking climate seriously are the actuaries, the insurance companies, the lenders, and soon it's going to be very hard and very difficult to buy or sell a home in Florida because of it. The only people who have figured it out are the actuarial analysts, the people who have to calculate the cost of insuring these properties. It's going to be harder to get insurance. It's going to be harder to get a loan for these properties because the lenders are going to see the writing on the wall that this collateral is at risk. There won't be as many buyers and it's gonna be a lot harder to get financing. And so when you start to see this scenario unfold exactly how Glenn Kelman said, you'll realize everything is about to change in our world. I'm gonna break it down for you and give you the facts and show you why I believe we're walking into a crisis. You know, I was talking to my dad about this a couple of days ago, and he said, John, you won't believe my PSEMG bill, my gas bill. He has a smaller house, like 1,700 square feet, somewhere in that range, just an everyday American house. Look at these bills. I mean. In my name, we have the same name, is right on it, right? So $660 just for gas for September. He said this is a 100% increase from what it was last year. So if you take into consideration what's happened with insurance, what's happened with uh, energy bills, what's happening with everything in America, you have to ask yourself, people only have so much money. How are they going to be able to pay these bills? You have August, $800, $800. July, 647, October, 563. I mean, these numbers are probably gonna hit a thousand bucks a month just for the gas bill, right? So when you look at where we're going insurance-wise, you're gonna realize everything is about to change. Please hit the like button when you do. YouTube will share the content. Educate more people what's happening in our economy. If you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for funding, maybe you wanna invest in distressed real estate or get a business loan, we'd love to help you if you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, closures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative or derogatory items in your credit report. Go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow. Take a look at this. In July, a report on the fall of Denver and the fall of Ohio, two months before the media. In 2023, I predicted federal rent control would come and food price controls would come to combat inflation. The White House is now working to make both of these law. Pass the first ever federal ban on price gauging on food. My incredible team provides tomorrow's news today. Only 30% of all viewers are subscribed. If you subscribe, the algorithm will reward the channel and we can expand and grow and hire more researchers. Thank you for simply clicking the red button to subscribe to the channel. Now on to the video. 226,000 views. I'm going to show you this video also. This is crazy. Listen to this. Alexa, what kind of hurricane was Hurricane Milton? From Fandom.com, Hurricane Milton was an extremely powerful Category 5 hurricane that caused widespread damage across its path in October 2024. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. 1.5 billion views. So it's getting a lot of attention. A lot of people are saying that this is what's going to happen next. And the fact that it was just leveled to a Category 5, the same Katrina was a Category 5. So 24 hours ago, this was a Category 1. So it's moving in that direction. It's moving in the direction of a problem. Helene cost May top 30 billion. Now that was the 5th of October, right? USDA.gov, you can see the URL, says Helene heading towards $100 billion in damage. Now these insurance companies, they're not gonna strike a check for $100 billion. You know, they might pay a very, very, very tiny fraction of 1% of this damage, maybe a little bit more, but they're gonna be pushing the cost on as if they have absorbed all those losses. That's what's gonna happen. They're not just gonna absorb these costs and say, look, this is a North Carolina problem. We're gonna just you know, take our losses there. Or this is a Tennessee problem or a Georgia problem or a Florida problem. They're gonna say, this is a New Jersey problem. This is a Utah problem. This is gonna be a North Dakota problem and a California problem. It's gonna spread 
everywhere. They're going to push these costs everywhere and they're going to make a hell of a lot of money off of it, you know, because they're in the business of making money. Hurricane Milton, live updates. Now a monster category five as Florida orders evacuations. The storm is expected to make landfall Wednesday, right? So 36 hours from now, this, this thing is, is set to hit. Category five, Katrina. But one thing that's very fascinating is Newsweek put this article out. This was in July and says Florida's largest insurance company prepares for a doomsday scenario. Now, would you or would you not say that this situation with Milton right after Katrina or right after a Helene is a doomsday scenario? I would personally say it is because what are the odds? I mean, it's just crazy within a 10 day window, back to back crises. Now, what Ron DeSantis says, he called for, and you can read that, those two words yourself, about citizens' insurance, saying that it's already not solvent. Florida's insurance, insurer of last resort cannot technically go insolvent. Charles Nice, department chair, and Dr. William T. Hold, associate professor of risk management and insurance of Florida State University, says they don't go insolvent. They would do assessments to make a potential shortfall. He explained, essentially, they can spread the cost of this year's potential losses onto future years of Floridians. Now, when you have this situation that unfolded over 2020 and 2021 to 2022, where everyone that was making a lot of money, they were considering their options because you were working remote, working from home. Why live in a city where you know everything's shut down when you could go live in Florida? You could pay no income tax, you know, live right by the beach, and you could do it at a discount. Everyone was moving to Florida and many people, nearly 740,000 people moved to Florida from other parts of the country in just 2022. So many people bought homes. They were saying, look, interest rates are super you know, inexpensive, two, 3%, probably never see that again. And I can buy something for cheaper than what it costs to rent in New York City or in San Francisco or LA. And so what'd they do? They went out there and bought these homes and they overpaid, I would argue, on many of them paying 50, 100, $200,000 over asking price, waiving inspections and loan um, contingencies, appraisal contingencies. And they bought these homes thinking that insurance would remain the same and taxes would remain the same and everything would just go back to normal in 2019. Well, now what's happening is insurance is skyrocketing. I mean, in fact, the average policy in Florida for homeowners was $1,988. Now they're claiming it's over $10,000 a year. So, you know, basically a 5X increase the last four years, five years. After this scenario with Milton, I could promise you that we're gonna see rates go up in a very big way in the next couple of years. And we're gonna see so many people price out of their homes. Many of the people are not covered for their, uh, for their damages along the Gulf Coast. They don't have adequate insurance and they don't have the money to, you know, to, uh, to fix their homes. I, maybe three, four weeks ago, I went to, uh, St. Petersburg and Sarasota, all these different pockets. And one pocket in Sarasota got destroyed by a storm. And I talked to a lot of these homeowners and they were saying, look, insurance says they're not going to cover us. And I asked them, well, how much is to fix your home? And I, all the homes in that same neighborhood, they're all single story homes, similar layouts. The flooding was you know, very similar, uh, each home to each home. Damage was very, you know, right in line with each other. And they said, you know, if we're not going to do anything crazy with really nice finishes, it's going to be somewhere around 225,000. But if we want to do you know, do it the way we want to do it in line with the style of our home, it might be 275. Now these are five, six, seven, a hundred thousand dollar homes. 50% of one's home's value is just in the repairs. Now you think about it, how many people own their homes outright, own them in cash? Not everybody, right? So a lot of people are going to get burned and the same scenario is going to be unfolding, I believe, with this disaster that could be right in front of us. They say most expensive state for home insurance in 2024. 10,996. Now I believe we could see homeowners insurance go up to $15,000, $18,000, you know, the next 24 to 36 months inside of Florida, right? How many people can afford it? That's the big question. I don't think many. And when you start to look at this unique scenario that's unfolding during 2021 and 2022, as these people, wealthy people working remote moved to Florida, a hell of a lot of investors want to move to Florida too. Why? No income tax, no eviction moratoriums, they can get a bang for their buck and rents were going through the roof up 10, 20, 30% a year. It was absolute insanity. Now, a lot of these investors, they have loans coming due, meaning they have to refinance their properties. It's not like buying a home where it's a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. 
every three, five, seven, or sometimes 10 years, they have to go back to the lender. And the lender's gonna look at their costs, they're gonna look at the income, and they're gonna decide what the new value of this property is and give a loan based on this newfound value. Well, when mortgage rates go from 3% to 6.5%, insurance has skyrocketed, taxes gone through the roof, and then on top of all of this, rents have dropped by over 9% in the last 12 months, and you have tons of inventory hitting the market right now, it's a problem. You have a 50-year high in apartment construction throughout America. You have 40,000 vacant units in just the city of Miami. It's gonna be a scenario where a lot of people are gonna be losing their buildings because two trillion, for context, the entire commercial real estate market is 20 trillion. So 10% of all commercial properties throughout America have to go talk to their lender, have that conversation in the next 18 months. Like, how are we not gonna see a significant reduction in these values? We're already seeing it across office buildings throughout Chicago and San Francisco, many areas. But imagine when you walk into an insurance crisis on the back of all this, these lenders are gonna say, look, how high is insurance gonna go? That's the big question. Maybe today we think the house or this multifamily property is worth five million, but if insurance goes up another 20 or 30, 40% the following year, and this trend continues, then the value of your property is gonna go down in a very, very, very big way. And so how can we accurately assess the true value? They're gonna be conservative. It's just gonna be a race to the bottom for a lot of these, uh, a lot of these investors, and a lot of them are gonna get left behind. And I think we're gonna see a lot of opportunity you know, being presented to new investors looking to step forward and acquire these deals for, you know, what I would say is pennies on the dollar. Now, what's very fascinating is mortgage rates are actually going up. We had so many people, so many experts say, when we reduce rates, the Fed cuts rates, we're going to see 5%, 4%, 3% mortgages again. It doesn't look like that's ever going to happen, uh, at least not anytime soon, where we're going to see a four in front of a mortgage rate. We're going to see these rates staying higher for longer, and we're going to likely see rates potentially increasing further from here. I think we're witnessing a major shift for the middle class. We're gonna see energy going up, we're gonna see insurance going up, we're gonna see taxes going up, and we're gonna see food costs going up. Everything is just gonna to continue to rise in this country. So if you are an entrepreneur, you are an investor, realize that most people did not underwrite this type of uncertainty into their future. And a lot of people, as the job market changes, are gonna be forced to walk away from their properties. So if you are an investor, you are someone that's looking to take advantage of an incredible opportunity, I think you're gonna see an opportunity in front of you and not just in real estate, but all across you know, many facets of the economy. Everything is structurally changing right now and smart and savvy entrepreneurs and business people are you know, making smart, well-informed, forward-thinking decisions based on exactly where we're at right now. Let's have a conversation about this below. And if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself, what I believe is gonna be a once in a lifetime opportunity, you know, 2009, 2010, that was a major, major crisis for a lot of people, but the middle class and a lot of everyday American investors were able to participate and invest and get incredible deals. I would argue that the next several years, this big decline coming, it's gonna be the last chance for America's middle class to be able to step forward and to do something and to buy. After that, we're gonna start seeing these Wall Street hedge funds and these tech companies, and these really, really, really powerful you know, institutions stepping forward, buying up all these properties, buying up a lot of this distressed debt from these banks and lenders, that once they get market share, you think they're gonna be selling it back to America's middle class? No, they're gonna be trading it amongst each other. So you really want to you know, take all this into consideration. The next couple of years will be so important. Make the right moves. Your family will thank you forever and you'll be set for life. Uh, let's have a conversation below. If you'd like to fix your credit, we would love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative or derogatory items in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video, schedule a free call, and uh, catch you next video.